Hi everyone, and in this video I'm going to show you how to add some layers of liquid starch to your um, and paper mache to your mask face form. Um, this video should be pretty short because it's pretty straightforward, but um, I just want to show you here on my workbench I have some liquid starch here, which is this kind of like cream colored soupy stuff. I have my plastic face form right here, this white face mask. Over here, I've got some paper that I've already shredded up into small pieces, like you see here, that I'm going to use to cover my face form. And then I have my bottle of liquid starch here. The bottle of liquid starch, as I'll show you, is blue, and it says Stay Flow on it. So this is what you I would pour into this cup here. Um, and then when we're not using it, we're actually going to keep that in a plastic bag that it came in. So here I've got my liquid starch and my plastic mask form. And now I'm ready to start adding layers to it. So the way that I do this is I'm just going to take a piece of paper. And this piece of paper is then going to get dipped into my liquid starch. So that the entire paper is covered in liquid starch. I can then take the liquid starch and take two fingers. And I can kind of squeegee off the extra liquid starch. And use my fingers to rub the liquid starch into the dry paper at the end. And then this is what I'm going to start to layer directly onto the mask form and smooth it down. And you can see that as I do this, then the paper mache is going to stick to it. And at this point, our goal is to cover the whole thing in at least one layer of paper mache. So that's what I'm going to work on doing here, is just this, repeating this process. Dipping into the liquid starch, and then placing that piece onto my mask form. You want to make sure that as you add layers, you overlap them slightly, kind of like you see right here. You want your layers to overlap so liquid starch and the layers can bond. You also want to try and avoid getting um, paper mache onto the lip of your face form. If you get it onto the lip, it's really hard to get it off, but if we keep the lip blank, then that makes it easier. I can also take flat pieces and flat edges and line that right up with the edge. And as I add paper mache to my mask form, I like to kind of work from the bottom edge in towards the center. And you want to use smaller pieces as you get further along and closer to the nose and mouth, especially if those are areas where you want to have a lot of detail. You want to be able to see a clear nose and mouth. If the detail doesn't really matter that much, then you don't need to worry about using smaller pieces. But it's always easier to make things less clear than it is to start from a really sort of hard to understand depiction and move towards something that's a little clearer. Also, as you add layers, you'll kind of get a feel for the size of the pieces of paper mache that you need to tear and you need to add. Generally speaking, you want to keep them a pretty manageable size, and you want to make sure that you remove all of the excess liquid starch from your mask form. So here I'm just adding this layer on top, and I want to try and avoid small holes and make sure my paper mache overlaps as much as possible. But if you have small holes or parts where the paper kind of curls up, that's okay. We can cover those later. But you want to try and avoid those as much as possible so you have fewer holes you need to cover up later on. So here I'm just going to dip that in. So this process is a little repetitive. But it's also kind of zen in that you know exactly what it is you need to do and where you need to add next. Here I'm going to take a little bit more, squeeze you this off between my fingers, and then just layer that right on top. Smooth it out so it adheres. You also want to try and avoid air bubbles, but if you get some air bubbles in, in the place, in the way, that's okay too. So there we go, squeeze you that off, and then I'm going to lay this down and smooth it on. So as we add layers, our goal is to add at least three layers. 
the more layers you add, the stronger your mask will be, especially if you're planning on cutting into your mask form after you pop it off of the mold. If you want to cut into your mask and all to make sculptural effects, or you want to attach things to it, then a thicker mask is better because it will be much stronger. But again, as you work, make sure that you're overlapping your pieces of paper mache. here so you can see there what I'm doing smoothing it out over the chin now we just need one more piece down here and this is a little bit of a wet process so your hands are probably going to get wet and get a little bit slimy from the paper mache liquid starch mix but that's okay it's part of the fun of this process you don't get to get dirty too often anymore in school. So we, it's fun to work with our hands. Get pretty dirty. There you go. So place that on there. Smooth that down. Make sure I'm smoothing all this so it sticks. I've got that bottom ring around. The edge done. So now I'm going to start covering it up and filling in holes. Take that, just smooth it down carefully, just like this. Again, I'm going to kind of press it around the eye so the eye shape is retained. If I leave it open, then that eye will be covered and it'll be a lot smoother. Which, again, if that's what you're trying to achieve, then that's fine. But make sure that that's your goal. I'm going to use smaller, a smaller piece here around the nose. And again, just press that down to smooth that on there real close so I keep the shape of the nose as I work. Another piece. I'll put this here on the forehead. Smooth that down. And as you look, you can actually see probably where the layers are showing through, where I've overlapped my pieces. That's a good thing. We want to see that. And again, as you add pieces, especially around complex shapes, start by pressing in the middle and then smoothing from the interior of the piece of paper out towards the edges. So that way your details are retained. over here add this piece on here it's really important that your pieces overlap because where you've torn the pieces the interlocking the fibers of the torn edges will interlock especially over the thinner fibers here I'm using just some inexpensive craft packing paper but you can use newsprint newspaper really really thin copy paper any kind of thinner paper that you want to use. I have used copy paper before when doing paper mache, but copy paper is a little bit thicker and it's a little bit harder to work with. The nice thing is you don't need as many layers, but then the layers peel apart because they're so much thicker and you don't think you need as much. Almost done with my base layer here. So I'm just going to finish this up again. Press it down in the middle and move towards the details and keep pressing it down there so my details are retained. I know there's some reflection there, but you can see the lips still in place. So, so dipping. One, 
small piece and cover the nose there. Just like that. And I've just got a couple more holes, but once I get those covered, I'll be ready to add a second layer. Now, once your first layer is done, you can move right into adding a second layer. And your second layer, you can use slightly larger pieces of paper or smaller ones if you want to retain your details again. Once you finish your second layer, you can add a third layer. I would, I would have no less than three layers. So you need at least three layers. Although, in my experience, four or five layers is much better. Again, especially if you're going to be cutting into your mask form. If you need to set your mask aside to dry, or it's the end of the period, you can come back and you can add more layers the next day, but you want to just kind of dip your fingers into your liquid starch and rub the liquid starch all over your mask and let it soak in before you add layers. And that will re-wet the paper and allow it, um, a better bond to occur. There we go. So now I've added one layer to my mask form here. It'll be a very thin layer, but that's okay. You can go through and just kind of smooth this out a little bit more. If this is where I'm stopping for the day, then what I need to do is carefully get the liquid starch back into the cup. So just run your fingers over your mask to kind of squeegee off the liquid starch as much as you can so all the extras off. Gently brush it using your fingertips along the lip of the mask into your cup and set that aside. There we go. Then I'm going to set my mask down to dry. And I'm going to start to clean up my work area. So I can take just a piece of paper and wipe down some of the liquid starch gloss that I left over. Um, as you can see, my fingers are covered in liquid starch, but this just rinses off in the sink. So I'm going to go to the sink, rinse off my fingers, and come back. All right, and I'm back. I brought with me a wet paper towel and a dry paper towel. I'm gonna use the wet paper towel, again, to wipe up the liquid starch and keep my workspace and my workbench clean. And then I'm gonna use the dry paper towel to just dry off the workspace. So there's no liquid starch left on my workbench. And then I can go on to my next class. So there you go, that's how you add and your first layer of paper mache to your paper mache masks. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Have a wonderful day, and happy paper mache.